All right, coming in on the middle of a project, uh, we've got the obligatory bloody paper towel, uh, drill bits strewn everywhere, crimpers, um, cable cutters, uh, vacuum sockets, drill bit with a massive dull drill on it. At least it is now after cutting through a bunch of fiberglass. And what am I doing? I am reconstituting our bonding system. So what I had before were a bunch of wires coming through the scupper holes, which I don't like to begin with because it restricts the flow of the scuppers, but it's how J-Boats did it. And it went down into the bilge here, part of the bilge, the forward part of the bilge, to that keel bolt. And then it bolts onto the washer, which if I'm honest with you, I don't know if it has a good connection or not because it's got a bunch of uh, 4,000 around the washer and the, and the bolt and everything. So I don't know if there's even a good electrical connection to the bolt itself anyways. Um, I'm gonna fix that, but I'll show you how in a second. So what I've done is I've run those three wires up rather than down, so they're not sitting in a bunch of water. I put new lugs on them. Uh, I cut them back to a point where they um, don't have any corrosion in them anymore. And then what I did is I ran a wire. Yes, it's the wrong color. Thank you, West Marine. West Marine generally has exactly what you need except for just a little bit wrong. So this was exactly the size of wire I needed, just the wrong color. So it'd been nice if it was green, but it's not gonna be green. So uh, sorry to the next boat owner. Uh, I've drilled through the um, beam here, the structural member, uh, on this side, as well as on the other side here. And I lined it up pretty well. It came out pretty good, if I do say so myself. Um, and then I run it back. And since J-Boat did it already, I ran it through a scupper. This one, I'm making the excuse that I've got another scupper right here. I don't need two. Let's block one. All right, then it comes back to here. And for this one, so it came out that scupper right there. And then it's gonna come up and it's gonna go and connect here. I've cleaned up this old uh, bonding connection. And it used to bolt onto that right there. And I am thinking it's got the same problem as the other one, which is there's a bunch of 4,000 smeared everywhere. And I doubt it has a good electrical connection. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably wind some a smaller gauge wire that's had the jacket taken off of it. I'll probably wind that around the bolt itself a number of times. Uh, maybe in a big figure eight with the smaller bolt there uh, as I tighten that down um, on a connection. The connection though will be coming from here this time. And if you ask, well, where does that go? I'll show you. It goes up into this cabinet where I have a galvanic isolator. Why do I have a second galvanic isolator on the boat? It's because everything is bonded to the keel bolts. And other than being bonded to the keel bolts, which is the keel is lead and stainless steel. Other than that, it used to be bonded used to be bonded right there to the sail drive. What's a sail drive made out of? Sail drive is made out of aluminum. So on the series of nobility for different metals, in other words, which one's gonna rot away first if you put, if you hook both of them together and stick them in a salty solution, the sail drive is gonna rot away first. The sail drive rots away after its protective anode rots away 
its productive anode. If you want to see one, at least once it's been worn down a bit, looks like, whoop, looks like this. This one was brand new about three weeks ago down in Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is sort of a little bit notorious for being a relatively hot, whoop, a relatively hot marina. But um, part of the issue as well is we have more noble metals hooked to the sail drive and everything, all of it is bonded together down to the keel and the sail drive. What goes first? The anode that's supposed to protect the aluminum sail drive. What goes next? The sail drive itself, which is a $10,000 piece of equipment that we just replaced because the other one was rotted out due to galvanic corrosion. So everything will be bonded to that one keel bolt that is up out of the water, and but still in the bilge and still connected to the keel but it will go through a galvanic isolator first, which should stop uh, anything under, I think, 1.2 volts from going through it. We're gonna keep the sail drive isolated with its protective anode. The anode is there to protect the sail drive, not the entire boat. And other than the keel then, we won't have any other metals underwater that are connected to one another. There will only be everything bonded or grounded, the shrouds, the backstay, forestay, everything that's metal above deck will all be bonded down and grounded to that one keel bolt right there. If we don't hook up the sail drive, to the same circuit, we're not creating a situation where there are two connected metals that are of differing potentials in a salty solution. So therefore we'll prevent, at least for the most part, the less noble metal from rotting away. Or well, that's the plan. I will uh, possibly check in later, let you know how it goes. Right now we have giant, um, uh, boils on the keel uh, from its uh, being the grounding point for everything. So if there's any stray current in the marina, um, that's uh, that's part of the the, the circuit, um, our lead keel. So trying to solve the different issues of uh, some galvanic corrosion, I think this is going to work while also not killing us. All right. See ya.